Okay guys, so the PTS for update 42 finally is done with maintenance. So I was able to hop in and start looking at the new scribing skills. I'm not gonna make a video on those. There's probably gonna be quite a few coming out with that. However, I did want to take a look and see how we can use these in some of our builds. Now I imagine some of these details may change. This is only week one. There's still a couple months until the update's actually going to come out, so these things may change to a degree, but it can give us an idea of what we're looking at. So I took one of my favorite builds that I have, which is a Frost Warden, and I was able to almost completely get both bars full of only Frost skills. I would have succeeded if it wasn't for sustain issues. And there is a written description down below if you guys would like to check that out as well. With this build, I was able to comfortably hit 77k DPS. You could definitely push for higher if you wore better sets. However, I choose sets that are more supportive for the group that'll overall increase our DPS by a large amount. So first up for the sets, we have the ropes of the subscriber. This adds one subscriber, adds one like to the video and a bell notification, and Venom Surge gains major happiness, increasing in real life experience by 1000%. So first up for our front bar, we are using the Master's Perspected Ice Staff. This comes from Dragonstar Arena, you can do it on normal or vet. This will give you 103 weapon spell damage and reduce the cost of destructive touch by 10% while increasing your weapon spell damage by an additional 600 for 4 seconds after activating it. We're using this on the front bar, it is charged with an absorbed magicka enchant. Depending on the skill choices you choose and what you may end up scribing, you might not need to do absorb magicka, you might want to throw on poison or fire if you don't need the sustain. On the back bar, we are using Perfected Whorl of the Depths. This is a trial set from Dreadsail Reef. Once again, you can do it on normal orbit. This will give you two lines of weapon and spell damage, Minor Slayer. The fifth piece will give you crit chance if you have Perfected. And then when you deal damage with a light attack, you apply a Whorl to a target and it will deal damage over 8 seconds. When this effect ends, a 5 meter whirlpool is created under the target for 6 seconds, dealing additional damage every second. This can occur once every 18 seconds and scales off of your weapon and spell damage. So we are using an ice staff on the back bar with infused weapon damage, and we are running this across the jewelry with infused with the magicka version of weapon and spell damage. Now Bloodthirsty will get you better DPS, once again this is for sustain because I wanted to go all out ice as much as possible. On the body pieces we are using Frostbite, this is an overland set that drops in Blackwood, so you can buy this from the traders or farm it yourself. This will give you two lines of weapon and spell damage and crit chance. It will increase your damage done with frost abilities by 8%, increase your damage done against chilled enemies by 4%, and increase your damage done against enemies with affected by minor brittle by an additional 2%, making up for a total of 14% extra damage. Now sadly, because both of these sets are light armor, that does mean we're going to be running 5 light across the body, so we do have more penetration than we need, but that's fine for general add waves. We are running this all across the body in Divines with Max Magica. For the monster set, we are using Noon Attack. This is going to be a slightly difficult helmet to get, as it does come from the Imperial City. I believe you can get this from one of the Tolar vendors, but this gives you one line of armor which can help us survive. And then on dealing frost damage, you create a 6 meter area under the target for 6 seconds. This will deal damage every second and apply a 40% snare for 4 seconds. Enemies damaged 4 times become immobilized and afflicted with major brittle for 4 seconds, causing them to take 20% extra crit damage, and it can occur once every 15 seconds. Like I said, this is not the best monster set we could do for our own DPS, and there are certainly other setups, however, with this setup, we will be providing Major Griddle for the group about 50% of the time. So they're taking 20% extra crit damage from everybody that is going to be more DPS than you can get from wearing meta sets. So I am taking a little bit of a hit so the overall group can get stronger. We're running the two medium pieces, Divines and Max Magic. Enough for our consumables. First up, we are using Ghastly Eyeball. This will Increase your max mag by 4.6k and your mag recovery by 460 for 2 hours. If you do want health, you could run Witch Mother's Potent Brew. 
but as we are a warden, we do already get a good amount of health, so that is not as much of a worry. For the potions, you can just run tristat potions. We already get our major prophecy and sorcery handled, so try potions all the way. You can run spell power pots if you wish to make sure you keep up those buffs, but we do provide them. Now for the stats, we are going 64 attributes into Magicka. For our unbuffed stats, we got about 31.5k Magicka, 18.5k Health, and 13k Stamina. We're looking around 1500 Mag Recovery, and 4100 Spell Damage, and 31% Crit Chance with 5k Penetration, around 17.5k Spell Resist, and 14k Physical Resist. On the Trial Dummy, we do end up hitting around 8.3k Spell Damage, once again without Bloodthirsty, and around 50% Crit Chance. And we are way over cap. This is due to our increasing of crit damage for the overall group. We can actually get on a plain dummy, we can get around 116 crit damage by ourselves. And our health does bump up to about 20.5k. And we are running the Thief Mundestone. Next up is our skills. First up on the bar, we are running a Bird of Prey. This is a animal companion skill. Hitting this will give you major expedition for six seconds. It grants you immunity to snares and immobilizations for four seconds. And while slotted, you gain minor berserk, increasing your damage done by 5%. Next up, we're going into Winter's Embrace and we are getting Arctic Blast. This will heal us instantly for 10K. This will last for 20 seconds and deal 1800 damage every two seconds. And it will stun them after two seconds for three seconds after activating and this has a higher chance to apply the chilled status effect next up in the mages guild we have one of the new scribing skills so this setup that i have done is called chilling contingency you will take the base mages guild scribing line wolf sealed's contingency and in this, we will choose Frost Damage. This will give us 7,800 Frost Damage. We will then choose Lingering Torment. This will make the damage go over time. And then we want to choose Force to give us Minor Force. Because we're doing Frost, this will end up giving us a lot of Frost Damage and a Minor Force for 12 seconds. Now, what's also special about this is when you first activate it, you get a buff on you for 24 seconds. The next time you trigger a skill that has a cost, it will burst and do that 7800 and then it applies that DOT. So this is what it will look like. So you apply it to yourself here. That AOE there was because it has a cost, it was actually proccing itself get rid of that real quick you can see it again there and then we will just hit our wings and that causes an AOE and that is the DOT that will be applied to him and while this is active as you can see we have minor force this is the only skill that I took that is sadly not ice damage and that is subterranean assault I really wanted to have an all ice build however there is only magicka skills and i just did not have the sustain for that if i changed my race to breton maybe i would have been able to sustain that however we would lose out on some of our racial passives so taking this will give us one stamina skill it will cause shulks to appear after three seconds and it deals 10k poison damage in a carpet in front of us it is nice that it is poison so we do at least get that especially with our charged front bar. They will resurface again after three seconds and deal another 10K. And then lastly, for our spammable in the destruction staff line, we are using destructive reach. This will give us 8.8K frost damage and an additional DOT over 20 seconds. They will also be chilled on the initial hit. For our front bar ultimate, we are going into the fighter's guild and we are taking flawless dawnbreaker. Ball of Stonebreaker will deal 12.5k physical damage, an additional 15k over 6 seconds in a cone in front of you, and after activating our weapon and spell damage will be increased by 300 for 20 seconds. In our back bar we are going into the animal companions and we are getting Blue Betty. The skill is free so it will not proc your chilling contingency skill, but hitting this will give you 5k magicka over 25 seconds and it will grant us the major sorcery that we need, increasing our spell damage by 20%.
every five seconds, the net will remove one effect from us. Now that last sentence is what is new in update 42. If there are no negative effects to be removed, I will instead gain a 5% damage done increase for five seconds. That does not mean it will only last for five seconds. That is each time it attempts to remove. So if I have nothing on me for the entire 25 duration, I will just have that 5% damage done across the entire duration. Next up, we're going into the destruction staff and we are getting unstable wall of elements. This will create an icy barrier that deals 1100 frost damage to enemies in an area every second. It will also apply an unstable frost shield for six seconds to us and nearby allies that will absorb about 5k damage from projectile. Chilled enemies are also afflicted with minor breach and their movement speed is reduced by 40% for four seconds. When the effect ends, the barrier also explodes, dealing an additional 5k frost damage, and it will shield us and allies from additional 2400 damage from projectiles. Next up, we're going into the green balance line, and we are getting a Lotus Blossom. Activating this will cause our light and heavy attacks to restore health for an entire minute to us or a nearby ally. And while this is active, you will gain Major Prophecy, and this effect does apply on both bars. It does not say that, but it does. So this will provide us some healing over time while we can also spam our wind chill to get instant health. Next up we have our second scribed skill that is in the destruction staff and we are using chilling explosion. Now this has an unfortunate name. This is actually the exact same name that the game calls when you get the chilled status effect and you explode from it. So that will be slightly confusing when we take a look at our metrics later. But chilling explosion is elemental explosion here. We will take frost damage, lingering torment, and magicka steel. So when this is put together, it'll cost us 3400 magicka. Sadly, it does have a cast time of two seconds. This seems to be the case with any version that I've tested so far with this skill. So it does take some time to cast this. However, it does a massive 15 and a half K frost damage and an additional 6K frost damage over five seconds and afflicted enemies get minor magic steel for 20 seconds, helping us with our sustain. Now, this is also quite a large radius. This is 10 meters at a long range. So we can actually throw this guy out here. Let me show you guys the animations again. is quite a large range here. There's it from the front. And then lastly, we're going into Winter's Embrace and we are getting Winter's Revenge. This is a ranged AOE skill, costs about 3k magicka, and when you hit this, it'll deal about 1200 damage every second for 12 seconds. This damage will increase by 30% if it's cast while you have a Destruction Staff equipped. Enemies that are hit will reduce their movement speed by 30% for 3 seconds each time they're hit. And this ability has a higher chance to apply the chilled status effect. And then lastly for our back bar ultimate we are using Norther Storm. This will cause a giant storm to spawn around you dealing about 7k frost damage every second for 8 seconds. And it will reduce enemies movement speed by 40%. As this is active, your weapon and spell damage will increase by 50 every second for 5 seconds, up to 9 stacks maximum. You and nearby allies also gain major protection, reducing your damage taken by 10%. Now into the CP, we are using Fighting Finesse to increase our critical damage. You could go for Backstabber, that will give you an additional 2%, however I do prefer Fighting Finesse as this will be at all times, whereas Backstabber is only in the back. It will give you better, however we are way over cap anyways, we're 149% crit damage, so Backstabber will be more of a waste on bosses. Wrathful Strikes to increase our weapon and spell damage for damaging abilities. Master at Arms to increase our direct damage attacks, and Thaumaturge to increase our DOTs. In the Red Tree, we are getting Balanced Vitality for more max health, Fortified for more armor, Rejuvenation for more recoveries, and Siphoning Spells to restore Magicka when we kill an enemy. For the passives, every pass is going to be important. For the main ones that will help your DPS in the Animal Companions, you will want Advanced Species. This will increase your crit damage. In the green balance, maturation is going to be awesome. Anytime you heal yourself or an ally, it'll increase your max health by 10%. That's how we boost our health to about 20 and a half K. 
In Winter's Embrace, you will want Glacial Presence. This will increase the chance to apply Chilled and increase the damage of the Chilled status effect. And Piercing Cold to increase our damage done by 12% when wielding an Ice Staff. In the Destruction Staff, you will want to get pretty much all these. You may not want Trifocus. This will make it so blocking costs Magicka instead of Stamina. For the Armor, you definitely want everything here and in the Medium as well. Because we are actually using the scribing for Mage's Guild, Mage's Guild passes may actually, you may actually want to get these. And the Undaunted, definitely get these too. And the Assault Line, if you want better movement speed on your horse, get this one. And we are a High Elf, so make sure to get your Racial Passes. And then in the Alchemy Line, get Medicinal Use to make your potions last longer. Now for the rotation, currently because this is a new skill, the skills that are crafted don't have perfect timers going on. When it came to the chilling explosion, the timer was focusing on that frost damage over five seconds rather than the minor magic steal, which is what I cared about more. So it is a hard time to tell how that is. So basically I go every two rotations on the back bar. Now, luckily because the chilling explosion and the shulks have about the same duration until they proc, we can get a fairly bursty start. So first up, you will want to get your Netch and Lotus Flower buffs to get those started. If you're away from the targets, you can start your chilling winds. You can use your chilling contingency since that is going to proc once you activate a skill that has a cost. You will then hit your scarabs and quickly go into the back bar and begin your chilling explosion. So now that we're here, we'll throw out our wall of elements right after that. And because this is a cast time, you can proc your wall of elements early and then queue it up. So as this is going, I just hit wall of elements and it automatically procs it right afterwards. So resuming this, we do wall of elements right after and then we throw out our winter's revenge, swap to the front bar and you can just start using your destructive touch. Soon your shulks will have fallen off. So you'll want to reproc those. As you're going through the rotation, keep your front bar buffs up on the back bar. Try and keep your wall of elements and Winter's Revenge together. So that way you know when you throw these guys out, they last 10 seconds. Since the chilling explosion is 20 seconds, you will do the chilling explosion every other rotation for these two. And then just keep up your Betty Netch and Lotus Flower. Now, when it came to the combat metrics, I've only done a few rotations, but I was pretty happy with where it was at. We were hitting around 77k DPS. That is about how it is on the live server for me with this build with more stamina based skills. So I'm pretty happy that I'm able to almost have an incomplete frost set up and still maintain the DPS. As you can see, we have complete uptime on chilled. Now, do not get this confused. This is what I was talking about. This and this are two different things with the same name. This is the skill. This is the actual chilled status effect. It is our number one most damaging thing. We apply chilled so much since it is an instant explosion damage. We are constantly damaging with this thing. While the max hit is 13k, our average is 8600, but our DPS is 13k, so we're getting more than one a second. Now, as you can see here with this setup, we are just able to sustain over here. Now, if you guys choose to do a Breton, which may be able to sustain better, you could throw in a third and final skill to replace Subterranean Assault. It will be a loss in DPS just because Subterranean Assault does so much. But if you go into the Soul Magic line, go into Soul Burst, we will then select Pull, Sage's Remedy, and Courage. Combining these together will cause Leashing Burst. This will cost 3400 Magicka, and after two seconds, you will cause enemies to pull in close to you within eight meters. It will also begin an HOT over 10 seconds and grant you minor courage for 10 seconds. So this will be a pull, a buff, and a heal. 
you will be losing out the DPS that Subterranean Assault will be doing, but it is more of a utility skill to help crowd the adds together. This is also more of a solo thing, a tank should be doing this anyways, but it could be nice to get that Minor Courage and healing. When I tried using that other soul magic skill, I was having a horrible time trying to keep up since I was having to hit that every 10 seconds and it was mildly expensive. I had very bad drain, so this is just able to keep up. Now when we look at the debuffs that we apply to the boss, our noon attack, which is causing Major Brittle, we have 46% uptime on Major Brittle, which is giving the 20%. So we are normally around 123% crit damage, but when this is proccing, we're up to 145. This will be it for the entire group. So when you're in real situations where you're not going to have every single buff that the trial dummy provides for you, this will allow for much better setups and fighting. And as far as the outfit goes, we are just using Frostcaster across everything. So guys, let me know what is your favorite part of update 42. How excited are you guys for scribing? Is there any build ideas that you guys have with the scribing that will be able to fill in spells that you've been wanting? I'm thinking it's going to be pretty good for support characters. There was a lot of things for control on ads and such that can make things a lot more fun. And I'm sorry for the three month break. I was just taking a break from ESO overall and focusing on studying. And now that the PTS is here, I'm excited to hop back into this. Please like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of this content. If there's any builds that you would like me to try out or any of the new scribing skills that might seem like a fun idea, please let me know down in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.